Hello, my name is Olivia Yana, and I'm a senior studying industrial and systems engineering, and I'm a peer assistant for CSE Career Services. Today, we'll be discussing our top five tips to help make your break meaningful. So the goal of this brief presentation is to answer the following question. What can you do over break to prepare yourself for a career after college? The first step in building your career is to identify your goals, then work to achieve them. Here are some questions to consider which may help you identify your goals. Ask yourself, what are your strengths? What do you enjoy working on? What are you looking for in a career? This includes finding a match to your personal values, work environment preferences, type of position, or job duties. The list can go on. Assess what your strengths are, what you like to do, and what you're looking to get out of a job. It's completely normal to not have answers prepared for all of these questions. That's absolutely okay. In that case, you may want to start off with, with some exploration. So what does that entail? First, you want to learn more about yourself. A few ways to go about doing this are taking online career assessments such as Pathway U, which is offered here at the U, BBTI, which you can find online, or a strong interest inventory. Exploring yourself, your strengths, and social working type will help to establish a foothold in career exploration. Moving forward, you may continue exploring online resources. This could include department websites or other online resources, such as the CSC Career Services website at csc.umn.edu slash career. This site includes several resources. One of likely greatest interest is called the What Can I Do With a Major In Guide, where you can explore some of the likeliest post-graduation opportunities aligning with a certain major. Furthermore, you may wish to sharpen those networking skills by connecting with your peers or alumni. Tip number two, gather information. Networking is a good way to help you determine what your goals are and learn about what others have done to get where they are. So during the school year, a few networking opportunities include career fairs, employer information sessions, and through professional associations and student groups. Over break, a couple good ways to get in contact with companies includes getting involved with mentorship programs or setting up informational interviews with scientists and engineers or recruiters at companies. You could also set up an informational interview with a professor on campus whose research interests you. An informational interview is where the normal interviewing roles are reversed and you, the student, reach out and ask questions to an employer or another person of interest about their job and experiences. Site visits and shadowing are also a great way to get familiar with a company or a job role and see what they're all about. The main point over break is to connect with students and alumni. That's a great way to gather information about jobs and opportunities which interest you. Here are a few good places to find networking opportunities over break. Handshake is the U of M's job and event posting board where you can set up an account by uploading your resume and searching through jobs and internships, events, info sessions, and more, which are all affiliated with the university. The Maroon and Gold Network is where you can set up informational interviews with U of M alumni who are signed up to help students like you and me with questions. LinkedIn is a great networking tool. LinkedIn is also a great place to work on setting up your professional internet presence. Finally, don't forget to maintain your relationship with those already in your network. You may be able to find further opportunities there. Keep yourself up to date on your emails as employers may reach out to you over the break. Stay active on Handshake for events and job postings and continue your digital networking. As a quick reminder, if you're going through an interview or professional virtual chat of any type, follow these tips. Stay on mute when you're not talking. Keep your background either real or virtual professional and keep your clothes professional. Try to limit distractions, but if something comes up, briefly apologize, ask for a moment to take care of it, mute your audio and video, and take care of the distraction. Employers will be understanding. And lastly, you want to arrive early and be prepared. Moving on from networking, we're going to look into building your skills and strengths. The first step, just like with career exploration, is to explore your own current skill set, strengths, and weaknesses. Some technical skills can include new coding languages, getting extra familiar with Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, or maybe even learning a new CAD program. Some transferable skills might include communication, time management, and productivity. Improving your strengths will make you more marketable when applying for jobs. Think to yourself, how could you build transferable skills such as communication? 
An appropriate answer could be getting involved in student groups, part-time jobs, class projects, etc. Set a goal of making a conscious effort to practice what may be deemed a personal, weak, soft skill. Building skills and strengths is going to be different experience for everyone. Here are a few examples to maybe help get your gears turning. One, you could ask people to teach you. A couple examples, how to run a certain machine or how to code in a specific programming language. Use your network to help you learn new skills. You also could look at online resources. Coursera is a, is a good go-to for a one-stop shop of all sorts to help you build various skills. A brief Google search should point you in the right direction. You also can attend events and trainings. Learn through workshops, presentations, conferences, or trainings in real time or asynchronous. You also just want to make sure you're stepping outside your comfort zone. Volunteer to work on a student group project you may not be technically comfortable with. Talk to someone you've never met before. You learn best by challenging yourself. And lastly, practice. If you introduce yourself to two new people a week, after a few months, you will feel more comfortable networking with new people. If you practice a coding language for 15 minutes every day, you will learn that new language. To obtain and retain a skill, you have to practice it. Tip number four, create and or update your resume. Your resume is more than a document. It's a marketing tool which highlights your relevant skills, experiences, and accomplishments. A great way to think about a resume is that it's your ticket to getting an interview. A great place to start is by creating what can be called a master resume. This is where you'll list all of your experiences on however many pages you'd like. This way, you can keep your experiences in one place to pull from, and it makes tailoring the document to a specific job posting that much easier. To that end, it is super important to tailor your resume to the audience. Utilize the job posting and the skills or experiences they're looking for to decide what to include on your application. Finally, you may visit CSC Career Services in several different ways. First, our website has a multitude of resources available to assist in your job search, including our resume guide. We also offer Zoom appointments over break, and when classes are back in session, we'll get back on track with holding daily drop-ins. And finally, tip number five, get experience. The blue boxes on this slide are the most likely available experience opportunities at this point in the year. Getting experience in your field not only helps you add to your resume and make yourself more marketable to potential employers, but it also helps you learn new skills and explore options. If you're interested in research, you can talk to your professors or look up their research on their department website. You may be able to discuss a volunteer position, which could eventually turn into a paid role or be funded through your op. Internships and co-ops are great experiences to look into because employers often treat them like long-term interviews. If they really liked the work you did as an intern, it is more likely that they will offer you a full-time position once you graduate. Work experience. As we discussed earlier, employers specifically look for transferable skills as well as technical skills. Even if your work experience is not directly in your field, you can gain transferable skills to show on your resume. Obtaining and working a retail job in your community shows initiative during breaks and it helps grow those soft skills. Student groups. As we also mentioned before, this is a great way to build new skills and it's another experience to put on your resume. Volunteering is also a great way to get involved in the community and work your soft skills. More details on each of these are available in our Get Experience guide. It is important to note that an experience doesn't have to be paid to be meaningful. You will reap the benefits in the long run. The information here is relevant for both applying to internships and to future full-time jobs. You can find job postings in a plethora of online locations. Most notably, Handshake and LinkedIn are great places to begin your search process. Furthermore, if you have a list of companies you're interested in working for, you can certainly check for jobs and apply directly on their website. Finally, there are several other job search and staffing websites available online, such as Indeed. When it comes to jobs, which will help you develop your transferable skills, you can look at local job or volunteer boards or your local newspaper. Retail or food service is also applicable work. Finally, the university often has student worker positions available, so check out the student job search section on the Human Resources website. 
The nominal resources we provide include several career development events, such as career fairs, workshops, the resume marathon, or practice interview days. We are still offering appointments via Zoom during break and appointments and drop-ins in person during the semester. And you can always email us with questions at csecareer at umn.edu. There are a multitude of resources available on our website, csc.umn.edu slash career. Finally, you can check out the Making Break Meaningful Guide at the Z link on this slide, which is not included. So look it up. Thanks for taking the time to watch this virtual workshop. Feel free to email us at csccareer at umn.edu for any questions.